Hi everyone, Joshua Hanlon here at Scareback Fan Weekend 2019, and I'm in the middle of the Great Ball Contraption Loop, joined by three fantastic Great Ball Contraption builders. So the first one here, Tom, you'll be very familiar with from our videos in the U.S. This is his first time coming to a European show. Uh, and then we also have Akiyuki here from Japan. So if you watched our coverage from Japan Brickfest, uh, he was in those videos from the GBC. And then we have Maiko, who uh, you would have seen from some of our past Scareback Fan Weekend videos. So all three of them together for the first time here uh, at the Scareback Fan Weekend. How has it been for you, Tom? It's been a blast. I've lot of, met a lot of interesting people. I'm really happy to, uh, to, uh, to participate in this event. Great. Well, I'm so glad you could make it out from Japan. Thank you. For me? Oh, wow. It's, it's a blast to have my uh, uh, worldwide counterparts here. So, yes, I really love the, the, this event uh, this, uh, this time. Yes. So now we're at the beginning of the loop. So, uh, Maiko, if you want to start us off here, and then we'll have you and Tom give the uh, color commentary as we walk around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay, uh, yeah, Joshua, that's okay. Well, um, uh, the first section has been built by Ben Youngman, one of our uh, Dutch uh, GBC builders. And uh, it actually starts already with, I think it's a US model from Matt Norman. Uh, and then there's a, a four of the same small steppers. Uh, these four, yes, there's, they're also from Matt, I believe. Those are uh, have a small change because they are actually driven by one XL motor. It's one way of, of uh, uh, let the motor cost uh, bring it down a little bit. Yes, and that's not something I personally do, but I encourage that because there's only so many power function motors left in the world. <laughs> and we do wear them out. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. John's getting ahead of us. Uh, there's a, a simple stepper. Yep. And then you know what this is called, right? Nah. That, that's an A. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've, I've heard it on, on the Chicago, yes, on the Chicago movie. The A, the B, the C, and the D. And in the end, no one ever knew what was A, what was B, and what was C. By the end, we always lose track. No, no, it's brick worlds are A's, it's Laurie's the one that messed it all up. Brick worlds are A's, and brick fairs are B's. Now everyone has to go back and watch all our other GBC videos to know what we're talking about. Right. Well, not only, but I don't think we have that many of them that we can't actually say. That is a brick world workshop module. Because there's go. not that many of them here. <laughs> but that is one of 2018. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And what do we have after that? Uh, we well, have a conveyor. Uh, that one is uh, Ben's original design. Uh, he, uh, he designed it. Next to the conveyor is uh, Akiyuki's uh, bucket wheel tower. So that's a real Akiyuki. A little bit higher than its original is, I believe. But I'm not sure, though. Uh, and... Well, it has some quirks, but it works quite, uh, quite, quite well, actually. You actually might know that one, too. Um, no, actually, I, I've seen that style of module, but that, it's, for whatever reason, that's not a very common module in the U.S. Um, but it, it's a design from the U.S., right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Um, who was it again? Damn, I forgot the name. There are several guys uh, over there. On the, other, on the other side of the pond, who uh, uh, has uh, made, made some, some great uh, modules. Uh, very simple, reliable, and also uh, uh, small. I'm, I'm so looking at the side of it, I'm thinking this is not the way it was originally designed because he's got some gears on there that are um, older than you guys are. So, <laughs> um, so after... After moving on from that, we're into another module. Yeah. This is um, using Snap. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Um, and ben, uh, ben, yeah. Uh, ben has a lot of uh, Snap parts. I don't have any of them. Yeah, maybe one or two. Uh, but uh, that was uh, one of his first modules he actually created. And he has a lot of yellow, a lot of green, and a lot of red. And so we made three of them. Yeah. And it's, it's just all Snap, except for, for the basic uh, mechanics, of course. That then he uses normal Technic parts. Next, we come to this very nicely decorated module. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a, it's a Christmas set of, of, of uh, for the Lego employees. I believe it. Yeah, it was uh, 2017 uh, because of the 40 years of Lego Technic. And uh, Ben has used uh, that figure, uh, created a, a cabin around it, so he could stay dry if he wanted to. And uh, uh, he's spitting out all the balls. 
into probably uh, a recognizable uh, stepper module from Matt Norman again. I, that guy is kind of getting popular here. Uh, yes, he's uh, been pretty prolific lately. You know, he's come up with a lot of cool little designs and, and published instructions. I says, good thing. After that, uh, we go into um, uh, an oil derrick pumping kind of module. Uh, and this is the, the builder clearly spent some time tr truly trying to mimic an oil pump. Um, and it looks really well. <coughs> uh, and from there. Did you actually know <coughs> that the oil derrick is also from uh, one of the other side of the pond? Josh David has designed that model. Okay. He's, he's the basic designer. Ben has, the, uh, has, uh, uh, has done some changes to it. But the basic design is, is from Josh David. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, from there, we move into a, a, a stepper that's at an angle. And I think this is uh, also a design that somebody has come up with. I don't think this is uh, it straight out of the box, but I have seen something very similar. This looks like it, they added a couple extra stages to it. Well, um, it is, it is, uh, it is reverse engineered by Ben from a video or where in the video where the module of Hugh Milliton has been shown. The original design is from Hugh Milliton. We will see a couple of modules uh, from him too. Hugh Millington of uh, Brickset fame, so people if people are familiar with Brickset, he's gotten involved in the GBC here. Yes, 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 yes. So, since a couple of years now, he's trying to, to uh, uh, get, get the UK in, uh, more into GBC than they already are. And he's, he's helping out because there are Actually, here also more uh, UK builders. We'll see that later on. <laughs> uh, after this, we go into a series of conveyors. Um, yeah, they all look very much the same, except that they're different colors. Uh, yep. All driven by a series of XL motors. And then from there, we go into um, uh, a stepper. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's Lass's. Oh, that's right. That's Lass's simple conveyor. Uh, from there, we go into a, a simple stepper. Yep. Looks very familiar. Uh, does it? My design. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, uh, this is based on, a, uh, looks like it's based on the last uh, ball pump. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you can see the balls being pumped up is cool. <laughs> so. Uh, and, and again, once the balls get to top, they get to go zigzag. And if you'll notice, this this uh, particular module, those the outputters, they're all completely flexible. So this thing could probably be, I'm so, I have to do this in two meters long. You're in Europe now, Tom. <laughs> Use meters. Uh, but, you know, we have uh, plenty of modules and not enough space per usual, so we've kind of wrapped it on top of itself. Um, after that, I don't know where it goes into. Well, it's uh, uh, this one. Yeah, the the builder of this module, uh, uh, the design is from Lasse uh, Lasse de Laurent from Denmark. Wiebeke, as being the original of the uh, being the builder of this one, has uh, actually made a, a change inside the, the the actual mechanic of the pump, because the design from Lasse uses uh, quite an expensive part, and she has changed that, and uh, so it's it's more uh, makes it more more doable for everyone else. Hey, because there are just simple, cheaper part in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The next one is uh, uh, yeah, a, a lifting mechanism somehow. Um, it's uh, it's a uh, Wiebke's design. Wiebke Brogart from uh, from Denmark. Very clearly decorated with a bunch of cool minifigs. <laughs> it looks it, like it's all they are actually in, in meaning to her because some are from Lego, some are from other uh, AFOLs like we are. Uh, uh, even split up into in, into different countries, actually. Yeah. Because somewhere over there, there are some uh, some minifigs from Norway. And I believe these are all from Lego. Uh, uh, the minifigs are a little bit, if they are grouped, then they are from a different country somehow. It's cute. From there, we go into a, another simple conveyor. Yeah, that's Lasse's conveyor too. Another last. And then we go into, uh, this is a the rotating wheel, is this? Um, is this a matte design too? Nope. Or is that, okay, what's this? It's my design. It's my. <laughs> yeah, the, you, you can find the building instruction on my website for that. And uh, Small wheel. Small wheel, yeah, yeah. 
it's uh, on my website. You you will find it in blue. Hey, but uh, hey, c color is uh, irrelevant for for gray ball contraption. That's your own uh, taste. What color you want to use? No, I cannot make a pink module. It, there's oh, no pink gears. There's no pink motors. That is the problem. <laughs> Basically, I can make one, but the problem is we don't have any pink parts for that. To do to, to be technology honest. is holding you back. The tech, it's <laughs> they got to do some color shifts. You know, they got to make some more um, interesting colored technic. They've been they've done some, but. There's no reason why we shouldn't have the whole palette of colors. <laughs> exactly right. So then what are we moving to back here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. oh, oh okay. This, this one belongs in the category useless parts. Because who is ever going to use those hats? There are some uh, a poly bag of Bionicle or something like that. Or hair effector, I don't know. And uh, we had exactly the same idea as, as I had. So I let her uh, uh, finish the model and uh, I throw mine away. But it's a very simple sweeping model. It, 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 it sweeps the balls up and hey, it's, it's a very simple use of useless parts. A small lasso. And then we go to a taller Wiebeke. Uh, sounds ridiculous, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the, the conveyor belt, of course, is, uh, is a, a, a very simple, uh, basic idea to get you started in the, into a great ball contraption. The mechanics of a, of, of a conveyor belt are not that easy. They are not that difficult, I must say. And um, you just have to make sure that the balls are stay on the conveyor. So this was her attempt to do that in, uh, in, in the red and white module. And she ends it with a snake uh, based on Akiyuki's uh, 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 snake exits. Nice flexible output. Yes, they are very, very flexible. And you can bend it in every which way around, but you do need height because it's uh, for each step of four studs, you lose one one brick height, so it goes down uh, very quickly. Oh, the red ball has uh, dropped next to the circuit. Let's put it back in. And after that, we go in into a, a boat. <coughs> um, I guess that's uh, appropriate for Denmark, uh, given how much rain I've I've seen while I've been here. This weekend, I think we we almost needed a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we almost did. You're right. It has. Uh, I've been. Uh, I think it's the tenth or eleventh time I've been here at Skabak, and uh, I've never seen this much rain, on uh, just in one weekend. They knew Tom was coming over for the first time, and they had to give him a true Danish experience. I, I've experienced a true <laughs> Danish experience now. <laughs> It's been fun. I, uh, you know, I did not bring an umbrella. I did know to bring a, a, a waterproof jacket, though. So, <laughs> okay. So I'm not sure. Do you know who the builder is for yep, the boat? Okay. Also, Wiebeke has has built that one. And it's, it's for yeah, a boat is also actually a useless part for us. Yeah, for us. Yeah. Our, as soon as our modules have to float, then there's something really going wrong. There's an idea, a floating GBC, every, everything's on boat holes. Well, you know, that Stuart has a module that's, that is, uh, it, it goes in dry dock and then it runs as a module. I, I think we had that story in a video. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> you know, and then after that, we, we move on to, uh, this is uh, another one of Fuse modules. Yeah. Um, this is a very colorful. A rainbow. Uh, but yeah. It's, it's, from some point, there's another rainbow module. Yes. <laughs> but uh, we've got Hugh right here. What, what do you want to share with us? Uh, we mentioned we mentioned you earlier, and how you've gotten involved in GBC. So what do we have here? Yeah, this is my favorite module. Actually, it's a uh, side by side shifter, as you can see there. And uh, I'm particularly proud of it because it's a, my original design. And it's obviously quite difficult to come up with a original design with so many around. So I was uh, very happy the way that came together. It is, and there's so much movement in this one, going back and forth like that. So was was there a lot of experimentation to figure this out? It took days and days and days to get it just right, and uh, even now it'll drop the ball occasionally off from the side. But uh, overall, it'll run pretty well over the weekend. It's super fun to watch, so thank you. Thank you. Well, after that, we go into another one of his modules. Did he talk about that one too? No. <laughs> well, we can, we can take a look at this one as well. Yes, this is a uh, ball accelerator, as, uh, as you can see. They're quite common. That, this particular one is my own design. Uh, the trouble with it is that over the weekend the tyre gets slightly worn and as you can see one or two balls aren't now making it up the slope so I've got a little escape chute there so that they don't fire back into the uh, tyre and make a complete mess. 
There you go. And I think, Tom, you said, you know, you, you, you usually don't prefer to use tires in modules. Right. So I have, a, um, uh, I have a thing against spinning tires. But on, this is not that bad because he's not trying to get that much energy out of it. So he's not spinning it really, really fast. Um, so my, my concern is with the spinning tires is they leave a little burnout mark on the balls. And oh. then that rubber gets distributed through the GBC. Uh, but this one is relatively tame in that aspect, so I, I'm, I can't complain. I, it's not my place here to complain. <laughs> there you go. No, but those are the types of small things you have to keep in mind with GBC because there's such small clearances on everything that even a little bit of rub off from the tire can affect it. Yes, um, actually, difference between yesterday and today, um, between how many of the balls are making it out. And it seems to go through phases of working great for a while, and then it starts dropping them. Yes, I have some spare tires in my case. Perhaps I'll change them in a minute and see how better it works. Always got to have some spare tires here. Well, thank you. After that, we move on to uh, three modules that are that are mine. The first one is um, the Archimedes screw, which has been seen many a time. Is this the first time you've flown with GBC modules? Uh, no, it's actually the second. Uh, it's the first time that these three have traveled, okay. um, and this one being brick-built, I did have to reassemble a bit when I got here. Uh, and then uh, after the Archimedes screw is my perpetual prototype, which is uh, up until about an hour ago been a perpetual problem this weekend. Uh, and uh, it turned out to be a, a combination of things, but I think we finally got it, everything ironed out. You knew what the fans wanted to see here, so that, that one definitely had to come. Yes, but at this point, I really feel like um, there's enough wear in that module, I'm going to have to rebuild it. So it, it may l no longer, and I know I, I, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> um, so it's working fine now. It was being weird all day yesterday. Uh, and part of the issue with it was, believe it or not, the next module <laughs> in that the motor in the in my pneumatic module uh, was wearing out and drawing more power than it should have. Um, so it was dragging down this one too. Um, and then when this module is not running at full speed, it backs up and causes problems. So uh, I replaced the motor in my pneumatic module and um, then we ended up, Myco discovered that it was still shutting down the train controller with both modules on one controller. So we separated them and that seems to have been the last thing to fix it uh, for now. <laughs> so we'll see. Things have been working. That's been about an hour, right? Yeah, something like that, something like that. Right? Move on. <laughs> Unless you want to get the builder involved because she happens to be standing right here. Yeah. What, what, what is this module here? This one is called Buckets of Fun, and it's built from pieces of the Bucket Wheel Excavator Technic set. Um, I started off with the... Uh, the tipping mechanism and then everything else had to be built around that to make the the uh, balls go up to the right height for the first bucket there you go. it's fun to see the buckets drop down and slowly slowly let the balls down yes it didn't used to have the sides on it which was a bit of a problem because if two or three balls got st well more than two balls got stuck in the buckets they would tend to go ballistically flying everywhere so as soon as those um panel pieces arrived on the picker brick wall i was grabbing handfuls and hopefully it's a much safer module now <laughs> good work do you have more modules here as well yes it's all the crazy rainbow colored okay. ones are mine um, you like the colors i do i do it's a characteristic of my builds of all sorts of things uh, this one is called slalom and um, we've got uh, uh, basically a ball pump from one of the the workshop modules in the states i can't remember which um uh, which which convention it was, but there's plenty of plans available online. And then a simple sort of slalom falling uh, effect at the end. And then one of Myco's double ramp uh, modules here. Um, this one, uh, the, the next one, the seesaw, is I believe by um, uh, a fairly new person on the GBC scene called Lasse Delurian. Uh, again, his modules are available online if you want to build them. And uh, that's a rather elegant, gentle back and forth motion. Another ball pump there coming along, and then we've got uh, the output of that one is a, a pinball. So just a, something I'd made up for myself was a pin, pinball motion, and that came again from bits from the bucket wheel excavator. Um, and then finally down here we have a, a sort of S-shaped um, escape to go to go up to the thing, and then we've got an Akiyuki snake coming down, 
And then finally a, a two ball tipping module at the end going into the next person's modules. Good work. I like all the colors there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pick back up down here in the corner. Oh, sure. Uh, these are built by a German builder, Andreas Oppermann, and Mario and his wife. They were bo uh, both being pulled into GBC uh, at Legwood Copenhagen already uh, several years ago. And they're actually uh, one, two, three are my model. And uh, I gave them uh, the task to, hey, create, do you create something in that, in that, in that direction and with that idea? And they actually did that. Because just around the corner, the, the lime green with the orange one is a, small, is, is a kind of sweeping module. And uh, it really sweeps them the, the balls with, with, with a little bit of speed and then over to the next one. And the fun part of the next one is it has a conveyor. A conveyor can only run in one direction. But if I change that motor, the direction of the motor, it will still work. Shall we see if that's possible? Nah, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> because we won't start experimenting while the camera's rolling. <laughs> oh, I don't mind doing such. It, it depends on the type of experiment. Some some experiments is uh, really well doable even on camera. But in this case, uh, uh, the three uh, small modules are driven by one motor, and so that's the, also the reason why it's not possible. Uh, the conveyor and the next one, uh, same as the first three, is, is my design. That one is also doesn't have a problem with changing direction. But the first one of that small row does. If that goes backwards, it doesn't work. And it doesn't have that fine mechanism which prevents that. Very clever, by the way. I try, I, I try to use that even more nowadays because it's always difficult for someone to switch it on. And do they need to turn to the right? Do they need to uh, turn to the left? Uh, what speed or whatever? And even though we have an unwritten uh, agreement to full power to the right, uh, not everyone seems to remember that somehow. So it, it's still prone to, to, to make mistakes. And you don't need a switch for correcting the module uh, in comparison to another one, which you uh, being connected to the same uh, power supply. There you go. So let's see. I think we're down at the corner here. Yeah, the small, they do small conveyors. Well, a little bit larger than, than the first one. Also, uh, the in design of uh, uh, Marion, of, oh, no, probably her husband, Andreas. Then we go around the corner. There's a small Archimedes screw. It can hold a lot of bolts. I tend to I, I tend to use uh, transport my bolts in, in uh, baskets of 250 bolts. I can throw one basket just completely in. How long does it take a ball to get through that module? It, it, just, it seems like, well, it shouldn't be that long, but it's got to go through a big, long path, right? Uh, I think I should check my follow the blue ball videos, because then I'm actually following one, and we should get a measurement out of that. So that's clearly a part where the... <laughs> you found a friend. <laughs> I know this guy, too. Yeah, I, I, hey, girl. <laughs> Future GBC builder. <laughs> Ball chaser. <laughs> so I do, uh, I'm, I'm really curious. I've never tried to put, the, put it together this way, but how stressed are the, uh, uh, how are the parts? They are. How stressed they are, I don't know. Uh, yes, they are stressed. Uh, you don't get a nice Archimedes crew by not doing that. Uh, the first attempts were trying to do it in line as we should. And uh, that didn't work because the gap where the balls were in was a little bit too narrow. So you really had to stretch the spring out a little bit to get it yeah. the right spacing. Yeah. 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 Now it's now it's actually working perfectly. Yeah. It seems slow, but hey, uh, as if it gets one and it, as soon as it starts giving, it does give it at, at the right pace. That's the way we want it. Yep. Yep. Balls balls come out at the same rate they go in. Yeah. Just a little delayed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> If you build a module which is three meters high and does, uh, does do uh, whatever, uh, you have exactly the same problem. Yes. Ferris wheel. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I, have a, uh, I have a lot of Technic models, so I also had a lot of those uh, piston engines from Technic models. I thought, let me try to use a, a few of them. Only 60 are in there. 
So it's not that much. I can hardly see a, a, a decent decrease in the bucket where they are stored in. I can relate to that problem. It's, <laughs> it's those pistons and, and the cylinders are just, you get them, you know, with a lot of models come with them, and they, unless you're making models that use engines, there's this not a lot of uses. Gotta, <laughs> this is it. This is the solution right here. Very nice. And, uh, I also noticed uh, the, the pistons are too wide. The, the distance between the, the sides is two and a half wide. So if you look at in, in line with the, uh, with, the, with the module, you see a very curious way of moving of, of, of the pistons. And I wish it would do that the other way around uh, too. When, when it's turning clockwise, it works perfectly. And when it's running counterclockwise, it doesn't work at all. <laughs> it's, it's, it tends to jam. <laughs> And do you have an explanation for this? <laughs> Actually, yes. Because the, the pistons are moving in, in, in a certain direction because of the rotation of the crankshaft. If you... If you the way it's assembled. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. uh, so it's not exactly lined up in the middle. It's more lined up to the side uh, if you compare it to the crankshaft. If it would be in the middle, then it wouldn't be a problem. But it's a little bit more difficult to put a quarter offset from the middle instead of a half offset. After that we have a lot of axles in a four bar mechanism. That's, uh, yeah, I just wanted to create something with a self postelier and it ended up with uh, two modules, one having the, what's the other, what's the linkage called? James Watt linkage, I believe. This is in a four bar system I ended up with. Let's use just a lot of uh, a, lo a bunch of axles and not nothing more else. We got a very slow moving one over here. The the yellow one is uh, is uh, driven by pneumatics. If you have good lungs, you can try it yourself. I don't, so I won't. It's uh, it's um, it's actually a air circuit. Uh, it only needs air, and the first piston is actually. Uh, moving the switch of the second piston and that one moves the third, that one moves the fourth and so forth and the last one moves the first one in a negative way and in that way each piston gets pushed out and then uh, being pulled in again and uh, uh, yeah, that, that's the way that one works it is, might be rather slow but in one stroke uh, it can also take about 15 balls so from that point of view, you have 15 seconds time to do one stroke. Keep moving down the line here. What do we have next? Uh, well, this is a module that um, uses the tires to kind of S up the balls. Um, I'm not, I, I imagine you built this one as well. Yep. Uh, this is, yes. this is uh, that S style has been around for a long time and there's been good ones and bad ones and so on and so forth and uh, I've seen some of this style that they work great for like two hours and then they stop working. This one, I, I think he's got the right geometry down so that it uh, it's doing the right thing. But you do get some balls kind of idling in there until yeah. another one comes along. Yeah. Uh, but that you know that's okay. Might frustrate the kids a little bit, but <laughs> we're okay with it. Yes, it does. <laughs> balls got stuck. Balls got stuck. Nah, no problem. Wait for it until you look at the next module and there's no balls there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, right now there's no balls coming in, so I don't know what's going on ah, here. Someone is fiddling around with your module over there. Well, why don't you keep talking? I'll go take a look. <laughs> we'll keep, keep moving along here in these modules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do that. Uh, this module I have designed for uh, the, for the uh, Scandinavian event last year to do a workshop. Uh, it has a lot of axles. Uh, it has a, uh, it's, it's a stepper design. Uh, it had about a thousand parts, and if you are not into Technic, well, it took some time for several people to, to get it built. The fun part of this type of module is it doesn't matter which direction the motor is running. It always runs. It also has a, uh, uh, an axle along the way, so I can connect a second one. And to disengage the motor, there's a small switch here. So if people are wondering why is there a gear changer in there, that's because of that. This one here looks very unique with the all the moving pieces involved. Yeah, I found uh, I found the idea in in a Lego museum in the Netherlands. Someone created a, a GPC model type device, but it didn't work properly. 
it, and that was not because of the mechanics. No, it was for about uh, because of everything else around it. And uh, because it, it used just simple gravity to make the uh, the arm longer and shorter. Well, when it's getting shorter, that is of no problem. It, it gives flexibility in the corners. And uh, uh, hey, it's working like a charm. Oh, yep. I think this next one we might have seen before in one or two videos. I have one small addition for this yeah. one. It's, it's been driven by a motor, of course. It has a worm gear. And the worm gear slides up and down depending the direction the motor is turning. This one actually works flawlessly if I turn it the other way around. The worm gear will go up. And the mechanics still drive in the, in, in the right direction. And that's what we earlier talked about. Uh, in this case, you can you as 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 someone who is helping us out uh, cannot make the mistake of running the the module in the wrong direction mm -hmm. because it just cannot go in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're right about uh, this red one. Uh, my wife has a lot of clickets, and uh, it actually got me into gray ball contraption. And uh, she created the conveyor belt, and then she said to me, "Okay, here's the conveyor belt." You can take care of the mechanics. Oh, then I had to start. And uh, yeah, something I said already th three years earlier, I think I should try to get building something like that. Well, since then I haven't stopped. We are talking about 2008, by the way. So I'm already into GBC for uh, about 11 years. Hey, Tom, did you fix your module? Uh, well, for the moment, apparently. <laughs> You know, the module that I thought was all good and well, yeah, well, you know, something else. It, it, it doesn't like international travel. That's my conclusion, that my perpetual prototype would rather perpetually stay at home, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough on all of us. <laughs> Here we have uh, uh, the models built by me, and I've rebuilt it, uh, I think, early this year, because it's, little, it's quite clean. Uh, it's a model of uh, Philippe Urbain, Philo. He is uh, yeah, one of the, the guys, I think, who brought GBC to Europe. He has created several types of, uh, of, of uh, uh, movements. And also, he needed, at a specific moment, he needed a, a ball counter uh, to be able to tell how many balls were through and in what time frame and, and, and that kind of stuff. And at a specific moment, I wanted it at Lagerwald in the Netherlands. He wasn't able to, to join us. Uh, uh, okay, uh, can I have the details? Okay, here they are. So I built it myself. I actually changed the program of the module. In the RCX, there's a small program eh, to be able to count, to, uh, to read the motor, to read the, the, the sensors. And uh, the, uh, but there's no way to stop to the, the, the module temporarily. Because if there is a problem, you need to fix it, so you need to stop the motor. The only way to do that with Philo's uh, program was by just stopping the program and then starting it again. Consequence, losing all numbers, so you don't know anything anymore. So I adapted the program a little bit and uh, I created a pause and, 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 and a start. And from that, uh, you can do that. Works well. It does. Now it looks like we're heading into a fairly large contraption here. Do you care to say something about that, Tom? I, I, it's pretty cool, I know. Is this yours? Yes. Yeah, I kind of thought it was. <laughs> Um, and, and it's uh, it's not a counter, but it kind of sorts things out and then just hangs onto a batch and lets them out a batch at a time, right? Yeah, that's it. Cool. <laughs> Actually, it is a counter. It is a counter? Yeah, it is. Okay. How is it? Um, explain. How does it count? How does it count? Do you remember how you were taught, were taught how to count? Long time ago, I know. I have the same issue. Um, we have learned that a very long time ago. When we are at 9, we go to 10. But 10 is not a digit anymore. So what we do, we make the 9, we make a 0. And that's what you see in emptying the line. And the 10th ball is not be able to uh, join the other 9 in the line which is emptying to the exit. The 10th ball is being driven to the uh, second conveyor. I see that. I was focusing on the input area, not the actual counterpart of it. And yes, I, I get that now. If I was looking at it from the front, I would have seen that right away. Probably it's confusing. Yes. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, so that's why uh, there are also uh, three tiles here, with uh, four tiles actually okay. with, with, with the numbers. So, uh, so by just reading it, you, ha you can read the digits. So this area just basically counts 10, but there are four channels of counting to 10. Okay. I yeah. yeah. The, 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 one of the problems I got with this module was if I need to, at the moment it empties, it takes about two to two and a half seconds before emptying out. That is too long because it gets fed by one ball per second. Right. That's why I made four in parallel uh, to be able to do that. So that can, uh, can be a little bit confusing. Because these are working in serial, not in parallel. Right. Very clever. Thank you. Actually, it was uh, thought up by uh, rebuilding from a building structure the rolling ball clock from, I think it was from Bob Kojima. Oh, the, okay. That must have been a while ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen anything from him in a long time. Yeah. So. And, uh, well, uh, that clock made me build this one. The only change, uh, change, of course, is a clock uh, counts 5, 10, uh, 5, 12, 12. And we count 10, 10, 10, uh, powers of 10. Ah, my robot arm. Yeah, it's my only NXT module here uh, this, uh, this time. It uses the three motors of the, uh, uh, of the NXT. I'm using two touch sensors to uh, check where its position is. Uh, and of course, the rotation sensor inside the motors. Looks great. Yeah, I kind of like it, so I keep it running. It has some wear and tear nowadays already. Iteration number whatever. But the uh, the NXT can can kind of make up for some wear and tear because you're using feedback, right? So you're not saying rotate for a tenth of a second. You're saying rotate until the switch is hit. So even if the motor starts to run slower or run faster or whatever, it's still going to repeat the way it should, which is, which is a good thing to use uh, yep. NXT for such, yep. such a thing. But the wear and tear on the gears will be there anyway. Yes. Yeah. But those NXT motors, they don't care. They'll just push through. <laughs> Next we go to Sweden. Uh, this module is uh, actually designed by uh, uh, and built uh, uh, by S Stefan Hill. Hey, he's to your left. Yes, hello. <laughs> I'm uh, Stefan from Sweden and the uh, Swebrick Lug. And this is uh, my module, the Cradle Tipper, which I got the idea. I just wanted to do something different with the banana gears. So I came up with this uh, two step design. So it basically uh, picks up the ball first uh, down there, uh, leave them in the upper part of the module, and then uh, tip them over to the next module. Uh, which leads to my, uh, my other module here, which is basically just a simple conveyor. It was an early module of mine, uh, and a small, uh, uh, yeah, like a small marble run here. So, uh, and yes, the, uh, the next module, is my uh, retro module, uh, which it says uh, 1979. And uh, all the bricks in this module were available in 1979, uh, even the motor. Uh, and the motor is actually from 1979. So it's, uh, yeah, it's the very retro module. <laughs> yes, so it's 40 years old, but it's still running. And it's running on this one here, uh, the 12 volt. So, but yeah, I don't have any spare for that one, so I hope it will run the complete event, yeah. And then I have my uh, big uh, bucket uh, portal, which um, I basically had a lot of these buckets lying around, and uh, I wanted to use them for something, so I made my own uh, chain, you can say, and uh, stuck these buckets onto it, and made this portal. and. Uh, we were supposed to use this to bridge the gap over there uh, in the in the other part of the circuit, but it was a little bit too small. So I'm using it as a as a standalone module instead, which is nice because I get this little bit loopback uh, uh, part of the circuit. And I also use these uh, roller coaster uh, parts for just to have a a nice way of uh, the balls dropping down. So uh, the next module is my uh, uh, rotor lift, which is actually my first uh, module I designed. 
And uh, so I built it for Scarbeck uh, two years ago, and it has been running very good uh, ever since. I have only done small uh, modifications to it. And uh, I have made the instructions for that one, so if someone wants to build it, it's on uh, Planet GBC, which is also true for my next module. The uh, slide scooper, which is basically a rotating slide and uh, uh, scoops, scooping up the balls uh, on the slide. And I, I wanted to do something different because I'm mainly a technic builder, but I wanted to do some kind of presentation here. So it's some kind of game with the red versus blue. Uh, I'm not sure uh, exactly what it is, but uh, yeah, they try to scoop as many balls as possible um, and it drops it up until the next module, which is uh, a small one using these uh, splat gears or flower gears. So I wanted to try those gears out uh, just to make something with them. So it's quite a simple module. And then there is another copy of the uh, Cradle Tipper, uh, which also there are instructions for. Uh, and i actually seen that one popping up on events around the world because I put it up on Planet GBC and uh, yeah, people seem to like it. So uh, I've seen it uh, being built on several different uh, circuits. And then another copy of the uh, Rotolift. And then my last module is the uh, uh, Monkey Pong, which is uh, probably the one I'm most happy with. Uh, it uh, bears resemblance to a certain uh, Nintendo game. Uh, and uh, it's mostly uh, like a presentation module. The, the mechanics are just a simple conveyor in the back, which is not even shown to the audience. So, but I wanted to uh, make it look as uh, similar as possible to the old game. And the uh, high score you see here is actually the uh, current uh, world record of uh, Donkey Kong. So I just wanted to put that into the module. So yes, that's my uh, last module. And the next one is built by Sean Mark. Uh, but I think uh, Michael and uh, Tom will continue. Thank you. Those are fantastic modules. Great work. Thank you very much. So we'll pick back up here at the red yeah. one. Yeah. Um, next, we arrive at a series of modules which are built by uh, Jean-Marc Nimal from Belgium. He has, uh, well, I think he's at fault that I am in, in Great Ball Contraption, too. Next to my wife, of course, so, uh, we talked earlier about uh, the, the clickers module. And uh, these two were toying around with the clickers and, uh, 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 hey, that created, made the start for that module. So, so yeah, um, an inside uh, wheel or inside track, how would you call that? I, uh, yeah, I don't know, inside out conveyor belt? I don't yeah. know. So it's a inside out wheel. <laughs> Another a different way of using conveyor belt type parts, I would say. Then uh, we have a, a conveyor belt, very simple, easy. Everyone can build that basically. You just have to collect parts. I'm not sure if there's a building instruction. Then let's cover some distance using uh, the very old train parts from the 70s. How old are you guys? 60s even, right? Uh, uh, I think it's early 70s. But it could be right end of 60s too. It's very well possible, I don't know. I'm, I'm not that old, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> Most not the bad guess. Sometimes you can also build very small contraptions. <laughs> it's the micro GBC module. Yeah, it's, it's adorable. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This is the way to melt Tom's heart, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it uses a micro motor, right? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, that's, those are precious. <laughs> but it is cute. That is, it's definitely a cute thing. It's great. Now we've got the UFO. Yeah, the UFO, which is actually not a module. And why not? Hey, it doesn't even have an inbox. Right. It's all part of this. The, the, the inbox is over here. So it's all part of one big module. Uh, recently has uh, apparently has found some time, our Jean-Marc, and he, he created a new uh, conveyor belt using the the banana gears, where the where the conveyor slides over. I think it's a, a very different way of using the banana gear uh, parts. I tried to copy this module once. 
So that tells you how old it is. And it looks like that bush is not that bush anymore. Either it's a lot smaller, I thought it was happening over there, but it's not. But the worm gear has more space than it originally had. It looks like there's, there, there is a bit of wear going on there, and, you know. A lot of dust on the black pieces there. Was, was that originally a full bushing? I'm not sure though. I, I do remember I have been exchanging parts there. Oh. Uh, it was originally a full bushing. Or no, there was another. Oh, that's only a half on there. That's why it looks funny. This is a half of a half. Right. And that's why it looks a little odd. So that other piece is going to fall off, and then it'll, then it'll need a replacement. I have to keep an eye on Just it. Just another bush. <laughs> yep. A half bush. This one, he has, uh, uh, jean -Marc has designed it to be able to make it and use it in two directions. We are tending to use uh, our circuit uh, uh, counterclockwise. And uh, by picking, uh, taking off the exit and the inbox and put it on the other side, you can let it run in the other direction. Very cute. Who would do that? I mean, that's like running well, the um, clock backwards. Yeah, uh, that's one way of putting it. I guess it was some of the uh, ideas in, in, in the early uh, uh, circuits because the circuits weren't that big as we have now. Now we have a room inside, and then it was just on a table going back and forth. Uh, uh, and then it, it, something like that would be nice. Mm -hmm. A small stepper, also in, uh, a quite new design. That wire goes across. I love I love the this mesh module the stepper feeds into with the the orange plane up here. Yeah, well the orange plane he has uh, actually created that module from uh, Unibog parts, so you need to buy a whole Unibog to be able to make this. Uh, I guess he will make uh, with a little bit of luck he will make a second uh, module out of that because there's so many parts in the Unibog, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pneumatics. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes. After the purple one. We have two uh, kind of similar ones, which are using uh, the, how do you call that thing in English? Uh, the triangular part where you can put your clothes on. A coat hanger. A coat hanger, thank you. <laughs> That's something I needed. He actually based this one on, on uh, using the coat hanger part, and he made a, li a little bit different construction, but basically it works the same. And because of the shape of the part, it works so nicely. It and uh, it's that it's that extra little bump, boom. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's the perfect sound for what this module does. I, I, I can't do it again now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's also some of the things I really like about uh, Jean Marc. He makes those kind of constra uh, contraptions. Next, there's a uh, accumulator screw, also by his design. Whoops! So, uh, apparently, uh, in module shooting. I guess it didn't get too much attention from us. Nobody saw that, right? And even if they did, uh, the accumulator screw is uh, built from s uh, individual sections. Let me. Oh yes, there is one here. Is it this one that did that? Did you guys see the accumulator screw is is uh, constructed where just from these sections. Here? It has a round hole, and I, I guess oh the last one does not have a hole because there's a lift arm taking the last one, and uh, from that point of view, moving all parts. There's so many different ways to do the Archimedes screw oh, yes. technique. Yes, yes there are. Just keep on going. Now we see very, a lot of very similar modules. Uh, a conveyor belt. Uh, I would say a quick and dirty build. But it works. Hey, why not? One with small arms. By the way, these are uh, built by a, uh, a German builder. The next couple of about 10 modules. And he is, uh, uh, let me guess, yeah, about three to four types of, of mechanics. Uh, the conveyor belt being one, uh, small arms being the next one, and we will find a couple of those more later on. This one I actually like because uh, it was one of the questions I heard Lego asking uh, at a specific moment, how long would it take before one of the GBC guys would incorporate the bucket wheel excavator into a, a, a great bulk contraption module? It was about after, the, after they built the module, it, uh, built the set, it was probably about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I would guess that too, yeah. And he exhibited it in, in uh, what is this, already two years ago. Uh, uh, he exhibited here at Scarbeck. So we say, okay, the, the model came out in August and it was in September at Scarbeck. 
Well, I've noticed um, he had to make the same modifications that uh, Jeremy had to make to his, in that um, the the drivetrain as as it comes in the model set doesn't give you enough torque down here at the bucket wheel to do do the job properly. So he had to add a motor down here. Um, and the other thing that I know Jeremy had to modify was uh, he did a different solution. So Jeremy, the this output conveyor. Um, by itself isn't going to guarantee that the balls are going to move. Mm -hmm. So so Jeremy put put this kind of thing on it, which required him to modify it because it, it would hit on the bottom. So he found a, a different solution by just popping those on. So he probably didn't have to do anything there. So that's good. Simpler. You take the set and just add a motor here and you're good, I guess. There you go. Good solution. <laughs> Sometimes uh, things don't have to be real difficult. I was just referring to the one with the small arms. You have another one. Uh, this one is actually based on my module. Um, I built at a specific moment nine different, well, the same modules, but in a different color because of this technic part here. That was at that specific moment available in nine colors. So I built nine modules with it. <laughs> and this one used exactly the same mechanism. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be quick. It's going to work anyway. Yeah, picking up three at a time anyway, so or more. So. Yep. Yep. Well, I, st I think you will uh, recognize this one too, right? I, I think um, uh, most people have seen this particular variety of module, and this this is an Akiyuki picker. Um, and a lot of people have uh, made versions of this, uh, some pretty much exactly like Akiyuki's, and some they take the idea and make their own thing. Um, and it's it's an interesting mechanism, so yep. people are always going to be like a little bit mesmerized by it. You know. Yes, uh, I was too. I have I, I've done this module too. You will find it any uh, a little bit further in the loop. And uh, I used uh, Akiyuki's video to re uh, reverse engineer it. I did notice one thing. There's some non-Lego rubber bands on this version. So, <laughs> and you know my purest sensibility is offended. <laughs> I guess you will recognize this one too as an Aki, okay, yeah. right? I like the incorporation of some of these, uh, like, slope uh, roof pieces printed. almost. Yeah. yeah, the printed slopes, yeah. yeah. Actually, actually, they were not printed. Oh, those, those are stickers. stickers. Those are stickers, yeah. yeah. I guess they are from the, from the football uh, stadium uh, sets, which you could, uh, uh, you could, you, you could save on, uh, at, at, at the Shell uh, gas stations here in the Netherlands. Uh, here in the Netherlands, yes, okay. <laughs> well, the Netherlands is not that, that far away from here, so... Well, oh, to it, me, it's still here in the Netherlands, opposed to here in Denmark, whatever. <laughs> uh, well, we've seen that one before. Uh, a very small conveyor. Only, only 10, uh, 10 uh, uh, chain uh, links. Yeah, no, that's cute. I like it. I, I've never seen how you do it with just a loop around the, uh, the sprocket. Uh, but it seems to work pretty well. You're not getting a lot of altitude gain from it, but it's enough. So, why not? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, and and uh, another conveyor we seen at the beginning of this section. And then I recognize uh, these uh, three modules as being mine. Some people say it's Philo's pump. It's a pump. Yes, it's Philo's pump. No, this one is different. It's not the same. Uh, each pump and this way of build, yeah, a lot of people tend to say it's Philo's pump. But it has, it has a different way of, of moving balls, it has a different reduction, uh, uh, it has a, a different inbox, a uh, different uh, mechanization of the, the stirring in the inbox. So I, I want to say that is not a Philo. Can I point something out? Yeah. You're going to hate me. Oh, I don't mind. It doesn't meet the standard. Why not? The input and the output are unaligned. <laughs> tear it out, tear it out immediately. <laughs> Why is that? Why, since when is that a standard problem? Uh, it's called flexibility. No, that's in the standard because if everybody did that offset that way, then uh, the modules wouldn't work. <laughs> no, that's not true. Uh, why is it not true? Because it has a small exit. It doesn't matter uh, where it is on the on the next inbox. But, but it's still it's part of the spec. I'm just saying it doesn't meet the spec. I didn't say it isn't going to work. <laughs> the input is right there, and the output's just offset a little bit. But well, then there's another thing. What's that? And many monitors don't do that according to spec. Oh, yeah. There's also a base, base, base plate spec. What, what do you mean? 
Oh, uh, the, the front to the back. Yeah. Front to the back. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, if a module is on the base plate, uh, it's going to be 32 starts long anyway. So how are you ever going to make a module which is 10 by 10 by 10 on a 32 base plate? It's well, never going to reach the end. But you're not, it, it's not required to be on a base plate. They just show the base plate as a thing. I've read that spec precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can argue the semantics of it. Um, and, and some of it really important, like yeah. the 10 by 10 by 10, and some of it not so important. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the 10 by 10 by 10 is, of course, very important. Right. The one ball per second is very important. Right. And uh, I really uh, hate the, the 32 base plate. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't care about it anyway. Because uh, so in this way, I'm so much more flexible. Well, yes, and that's the thing is that um, you know it never ends up a straight line exactly. anyway. You know, yeah. so we got yeah. you, you just you deal with what you got. And yeah. It works out in the end. <laughs> I give people a hard time about not meeting the the spec, but if it if it still can be made to work, we'll we'll get it in. It's no big deal. I'm. What do we have over here then? Uh, it's actually a, a rebuild of one of my first uh, modules, using those very old connector pieces. And uh, the first one was almost hitting the, t the table. And uh, all, uh, very often th 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 those pieces, uh, 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 yeah. They bend back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem with that, that old style of uh, chain uh, and the way you clamp things onto it is it's not very sturdy. Yeah. Um, but even the, the chain itself is not that sturdy. Yeah. It'll pop open. But if I, if I pack this one, now it's about, what is it, uh, 50 centimeters long. It's going to be quite square when I put it in the boxes. So it folds up. Yeah. Uh, I, I can fold the legs in, I can fold the, the exit in, and the inbox I can lift up. And I have some extra holes here, so I can put it up. Yeah. So it's, it's, because that's the next uh, important thing. If you have to transport your stuff, uh, you need to do that as easy as possible. And you don't have the time to till tomorrow to, to to get your stuff packed again. Right, right. Yeah, that was something I initially I made a big gangly module and it, it could break apart, but and then I started making other modules and, and I quickly learned that you have to plan for how is this gonna travel? Um, because if you arrive and it's in pieces because of the way you packed it, it's you're making more work for yourself. So well, we're arriving at the Akiyoki section. Several modules are uh, uh, originally designed by Akiyoki. Uh, the first one is uh, my uh, uh, reverse engineering of the of the uh, his video, of also the the, the, the pick and release. Uh, the mechanics are exactly the same. Uh, maybe beam uh, more or less, uh, uh, but the the, the visu visibility of the model is completely different. It's already rebuilt because the first one was red. <laughs> then we find the, the robots, I think it's called uh, Catch and Release, isn't it? Uh, it those are so cute. So I, I really is such a fun module to watch. This is what happens to modules when you use them. <laughs> <laughs> they make, so very true. They make ABS dust. <laughs> I, uh, I, I've built this one uh, too uh, by buying uh, Akiyuki's instructions and uh, because I was uh, I could figure out how the arms work uh, you, you can actually see that why it does not pick up balls or actually does pick up balls you can it is viewable it is visible but what happens next that's not visible anymore yeah, it's, underneath. it's underneath and that's why I uh, uh, I bought the instructions because I want to learn from that. I'm not a mechanical engineer or something in that uh, in that direction, uh, so I need to learn from viewing, from building, and uh, I want to know what he did there. Yeah. And, and this is his actual module. This is the one he brought from Japan. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's it's a special. It's not just one built from his instructions. It's one he built. So. Touched by Akiyuki. <laughs> yep. Yep. Every single part. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Next, we have, uh, uh, I think it's, it's called Pinball, I'm not sure. It is uh, also an Akiyuki design. Like it's Plinko. Oh, uh, also. Uh, Plinko. Okay for me too. Uh, simple, 
an inbox, a conveyor belt to, be, uh, to bring them up, and a nice way of letting them just roll down to the exit and, uh, and, and put them to the next module. And occasionally you get a basket too, you know, you get the basket at the bottom. Oh. <laughs> the snake heads. These things are fun to watch. Yeah. But they do have their... Mm, what shall I say? I think at, at, at a specific moment you will notice a lot of lag because the the axles are getting Worn. thinner yeah. and the holes are getting larger. So, uh, yeah, boss, it's, it's, they're a little floppy. <laughs> but it's still working, but as long as it keeps picking up balls. Yep. Uh, and it's really cute, the uh, six colors all doing things. Um, I'm going to skip this one for just a short moment to go to another picker. I call it a picker. Uh, we have seen that one before. I think that's uh, Andreas. <laughs> yes, uh, put a brick on it. Uh, Andreas' way of uh, making that model. Um, those last few Akayukis uh, were also built, uh, uh, starting from the Plinko, were built by Andreas uh, from Sweden. Uh, I have seen this module before, but I forgot who has actually designed it. Because Andreas did not do that. He has built it from, uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, building instruction. Do you happen to know that? I think it's, um, I couldn't swear to it, but I, I think it's a um, great ball pit design. Yeah. I believe, I'm not sure. So this is the thing, GVC's just grown so much, I, I can't keep track anymore. Yeah. Who designed what? Um, I, re I recently saw, no, not seeing it. I, I think, oh, uh, the Australians have quite a database of, of, of models. Yeah. I think we would need that something like that worldwide. So uh, if you find uh, a module, hey, that's that one. And then we can find a name next to it. Great ball contraption. Yeah. Coming, it's coming. Yeah. Great ball <laughs> on that. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here, but I think we've got a problem. Watch out. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you busy while he's fixing it. Uh, yeah, so uh, talking about great ball contraption, um, uh, for years now it's been a wiki, and it never really got the momentum to, to support a wiki and forums and all that. So. Um, it's now under new ownership, um, and the, the gentleman who's taken it, taken it over is uh, supposed it was shooting to have some new content up there, a starting point, uh, somewhere around now. I'm not really sure. I haven't checked on it in a while. Uh, and the idea is that it's a starting point, it's a jumping point, so that people who are just getting into GBC, they can go there. They, can, they should be links to instructions um, for simple modules. Um, no forums right now, but it's just a, a, a place we can point people to, to for them to then jump and, and start. Uh, and it will grow as time goes on. Uh, we'll see. And it looks like we've got this problem straightened out. And then go back to talking about modules. Yeah. How do you like this orange one, Tom? Uh, that's pretty cute. Um, I, I feel like when you ask me things like that, it's a loaded question. <laughs> Oh. That's the best module I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> its exit is over there. Yeah, well, that idea of having a an output that you can move around a lot is very, very useful. Yeah. You, can, you, you can, if you have to remove a module because it's not working anymore, whatever reason. Stretch right past. Yep. Exactly. That's one of the reasons. It's easy for cornering. Uh, so that's why I create those types of exits. Uh, the one that John is filming now is actually quite a new one. I think I've created that a month ago, maybe one and a half. I used to have something like that too. And uh, that's actually also one of the modules who doesn't care in which direction the motor is actually running. You put the same uh, switching gear mechanism in it? Yeah. Oh, that's that's the switch here, so this one is easy to demonstrate. Now the worm gear is going to change to the other 24 gear. And the module still is running in the right direction. So there you go. Yeah, it makes it easier for people to either uh, uh, switch it on in case uh, there was a disturbance, or uh, if someone else uh, unpacks my, my stuff and set it up, they don't have to take, think about it anymore. Next one has some, some wildly swinging arms on it. Yeah, it has, it has. It's also a very old one. I think it would be about 2009 or something like that. I can tell by the dust. <laughs> it's 
like those, those black parts are slowly turning gray. <laughs> And the green, they have some grayish. I don't know what I'm still looking at. But it works like a charm. That is, it does have a funnel. And that funnel can give you trouble if there's too many balls at once in a short period. Yeah, it's amazing. Anytime you funnel balls, they will find a way to lock up. And, yes, uh, they do. Yes, they do. I have a good story about that, but well, I'll tell you <laughs> later. We don't try to get it in the video. <laughs> Uh, this one is also a rebuild of uh, the same type of module. It uses small arms. We have seen that uh, in, in, uh, in uh, the section of CAS. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same idea, except I use a different driving mechanism. I'm using uh, just a few gears. Uh, I actually, only one gear interlocking with the next one. And uh, CAS uses a whole, a whole series of gears for each individual arm to move. Of course, another flexible uh, output again. Recently, uh, someone asked me who had, uh, who was actually started with using the extra force gear uh, or wheel as a, as a as a way to move our balls. Uh, I said it could be me, because several years ago there is a black one. I remember I had the same module with black with a black wheel. I had to go back to 2011 to find it. So I guess that would be the first one. I'm not sure if I am. But it's, yeah, it's an easy way to, to uh, create a wheel. But just using parts no one uses. Now we get a lot of technique. Uh, a servo motor has a problem. It goes only 180 degrees from, from left to middle to right and back again. It doesn't make full turns. And uh, one, two, three, four modules, white, red, colorful and orange, uh, all have a servo motor inside. And it's a very simple solution to that, to uh, make a servo motor run. Because you can use that with a switch. Go back and forth with a switch. But yeah, we are crazy, but not that crazy. So we mechanize it. It's a, it's a very interesting solution. And the fact that you have you know, four phases here, and that, that gives you the, the ability to make a, a stepper do exactly what you want, which is what you've got going on. Really pretty neat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then those, let's see, it brings us to the big, the big bridge here. Yep, yep, yep. I have recently uh, uh, created a new bridge. It was standing on a table to, uh, at, uh, at my home. Okay, I can fit it. Um, I have a slight problem here. <laughs> it was a little bit higher than anticipated. But it's, uh, it, the complete bridge uh, fits in just one box, and that's one of the important things. It's quite sturdy now because it's almost uh, 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 vertical, not bent too much like uh, my previous bridge did. Um, the bridge itself is built in sections. Uh, I have an, a another section, so I can extend it. Longer? Yeah, this isn't long enough? <laughs> Sometimes no. Sometimes no. Because then you can some other tricks, like just closing a circuit over a gap. You can also make a cross somewhere, uh, somewhere else in your circuit and make a double loop or an eight-like uh, loop. Like it had been done with the other bridge back there, where yes. it looped around back under. Yep. Yes, that's, that's also one of the options. The important thing is that it's massive and very tall. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, at the Lagerwald in the Netherlands, we have a guy uh, in our circuit who's working with us. As he's almost two meters. Uh, so if the bridge on the other side would be there, he would, with a little bit of luck, he would have seen it. And I remember an early Copenhagen, Klaus Hansen's bridge wasn't just like this, just not tall enough. And I was fixing a module. I walked out. Okay, now it's the bridge over there. And not funny. That didn't end well. <laughs> no. Now you've got lots of clearance here. Yeah, yeah, that, that was one of the most important aspects of it. Uh, flexible, uh, very modular. And uh, the basis of both uh, pillars is, uh, yeah, is first a stable, a second is the same. So it doesn't matter which parts I'm using for the left or the right uh, uh, part. And another very nice aspect, I think, we can see it here on the outside, also typically use of a useless part. That is in building. Uh, and, and, and part separator is very useful for separation or for taking down 
uh, 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 models any day. And uh, uh, let's do it. Let's use it for someone else uh, in, in another way. Perfect to just let the balls down gently. Yes. Yes. You have to use up that energy, and that, that's the thing. If you didn't use it up, the ball comes down too fast. You, you don't know what's going to happen. I really liked how you just kind of continued the pattern just off to the right to get it away from the tower. That's, that's kind of cute. Well, I think that takes us back to where we started here. So this has been great, guys. Thank you so much. It's great to see uh, you collaborating here uh, at Scarebeck. So I, I hope it's been an enjoyable event for both of you. Absolutely. I've had a blast. <laughs> oh, yes, me too. Me too. Awesome it's, stuff. Yeah. I think uh, that is one of the, uh, the biggest things of, of Great Ball Contraption. If you want to participate, you can participate. So why not? And then uh, one of the important things of every event, you should have fun together. I think we have had a lot of it, right? Yes, we have. <laughs> Despite the troubles my module has had, I've still had a blast. So. There you go. Well, thank you both, Tom, Maiko, uh, really You're great. Welcome. And I'm glad we saw Akiyuki at the beginning. So I'm glad yep. all three of you could be together here. This has been really wonderful. Thank you so much.